Welcome to our Hang Printer build series. We are at the Trinamic headquarters and I'm here with Torbjorn who, when he's not fighting off sentient robots, likes to build his own. Thank you to Trinamic for sponsoring this video series. So you're the original designer of the hang printer. What, what did you design this for? What were your goals when, when making this thing? So my goal is to democratize large-scale freeform fabrication. Yeah, you, you by, practiced that. Yeah, by <laughs> designing and spreading a cable-driven wrap wrap. All right. So is, yeah. in practice, that means you're making a machine that can print really large for really cheap. You're doing that by, by breaking the laws of, of conventional 3D printing. This is, this is not a, a 3D printer as you'd buy it off the shelf. No, yeah. no, you need a room because you, you won't build a frame. You will use your room as the frame. Right. And, and that, really, that really is the kicker here because it's this, this is your tool head. This is the, the actual effector basically the mover that's, that's going to be moving around so this mover is you know not on, on linear rails or anything this is suspended in, in free air right it's suspended by cables from the ceiling and also from anchor points on the floor moving around like this so this isn't just one unit this is not the whole printer right here that that moves around that there are a few other units as well there's the mover we have a ceiling unit we have a few anchors that are going to be on the on the ground what what do each of those do okay yes so this is the big new thing in the version 3 it has split up into a dual unit design so that the ceiling unit carries all the motors all the electronics all the spools and um, the lines goes from the spool out to anchor points and then into the the mover and ends in the mover somewhere. So any of the heavy stuff that doesn't need to move around is actually not moving around. And, and this ceiling unit, we are actually going to bolt that to the actual concrete ceiling. Yes, we yeah. will actually use an impact drill in yeah. the ceiling of Trinamic headquarters. Yeah, and, and you, can, you can watch us do that uh, on the live stream that we're going to do uh, actually building this printer. So since all the electronics, all, all the 3D printer bits um, are on the ceiling. How are we going to communicate with that? I mean, I don't think we're just going to plug an SD card into into the board and use an use an LCD up up on the ceiling on the ladder, right? Okay, so that's yeah, that's a new philosophy stand of the hang print project. We really concentrate on the bare bones stuff, and we don't want to bind people into a certain way of communicating G code into the electronics. So my favorite solution is using a Bluetooth interface, but uh, the Two other guys in Hang Printer core team, they prefer the Octoprint and Octopi solution. Yeah. But the general idea with the Hang Printer and the V3 in general is you're not locking people into like having to buy this one exact part, I, I guess, except for, for ramps and, uh, and the Arduino, but you would have probably bought those anyways. But things like hot and extruder, that's just a standard mount, you're not you know, requiring one specific thing. Yeah, we, we don't have a favorite tool head, no favorite extruder. We, we just let users mount their own favorite to the mounting bracket. I also hope people will develop uh, tool heads that use clay and other things uh, a bit down the line. Yeah, and, and I guess that that's one of the things that, that we, we should also talk to. This is a, a community project. This is yes. fully open source. This is hosted on GitHub. I guess that the one thing we can do right now with these videos is we, we can add a bit to the documentation that's out there. Um, we can show people what the process is, what the parts are, and what the you know what what it looks like to build one. So I guess we, we should also mention why people would even want to to build one. Like how we, you said it prints large. What was your largest one that you built so far? Um, the largest print with the version two that the per previous version it actually printed a four point six meter high. Babel Tower in Umeå. Yeah, so that is that is 15 foot tall, roughly. And this machine, or these parts, uh, were in Rome last week and printed a vase that was one meter tall and 40 centimeters wide. So let's actually do like a, a common sized room that you'd convert, say three by three meters and maybe two and a half meters tall, so that's 10 by 10 by eight foot. If you use the entire room, how large could you print in that? You could print that vase that we printed in Rome because that was about the dimensions we had. Right. Uh, you could go even higher, but if you go higher, you can't be 40 centimeters wide up there because the build volume is shaped like this. But one of the things you, you did also mention was that the further you get away from your from your original point, um, the less precise, accurate 
um, accurate. Okay, so let's accurate the entire printer is going to be. The consequences of any miscalibration gets larger and larger the farther away you go from uh, the origin. What does the, the calibration look like uh, that you mentioned? Uh, the calibration is actually the, the weak spot of the project right now. Uh, you will actually draw points on your floor, pivot points, and you will uh, measure with measurement tape uh, where the anchors are. Uh, in the Cartesian coordinate system. So you, you will need to measure along the y-axis and along the x-axis separately. Okay, so, so right somehow, somehow you, you need to make square measurements. We'll, we'll see how we can do that. You kind of have to measure with the room um, and you are printing in the room. You, you are printing onto a either your floor or we have some, some plywood um, bases that we can uh, use as print surfaces. There are a few limitations with that, right? Yes. Well, the first layer is, is also a weak spot of any project that tries to do big 3D printing without a heated bed or a yeah. sauna. I guess you, you could just make a big heated bed. It uh, would work. It would be expensive though and it's yeah. hard to take with you when you're traveling. Exactly. So uh, you, you're gonna find a plywood tree pretty much anywhere. Um, unheated, obviously. So PLA is the material of choice. Yeah, it is, because it doesn't warp as much as the others. And you're just using white, blue or hairspray for the, for the first layer? Yeah, I actually use uh, white glue so that the PLA sticks really hard to the plywood. And if I need first layers, then I use the plywood itself as first layers instead of printing solid bottom layers. Yeah, you need a jigsaw for that. Yeah, it's kind of the first player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, there are there are a few things, a few tricks that he that he can work around with here. But the thing is, this is still this is still a real three D printer. It's a real functional thing that you can print real things with. Who who are the people that you see that want this printer? I can see um, artists are very enthusiastic about this printer, but they often underestimate the difficulty of mastering G code failure yeah. modes of three D printing. Uh, not always, but sometimes. <laughs> Architects are pretty enthusiastic uh, because they want to do large prints, which are very expensive right now. Also, people who want to mold with the carbon fiber, they, they need something to mold over, just basic shapes, but big. So what, what I was seeing was, you know, you, you're printing a lot of vases, you're printing a lot of hollow parts, but you can definitely print parts with an infill with an actual structure to them, right? Yeah. Um, another hang printer core developer is Fred. He's printing uh, benches right now. And you said that artists and architects, they, they are the people that, that want a printer like this. But are they actually the people that should build one? Is this, is this a printer that the people <laughs> should build as like a, a first dab into 3D printing at all? The fraction of artists and architects that know what G-code is and can send a single G-code, they should try to build this one. <laughs> okay, so you're actually encouraging people to, to, to learn with the project? Yes, you need to learn some basic 3D printing stuff before trying out this printer, I guess. Yeah. It's not a good first printer. I'd say 50% of those who stumble in this build stumble when they're supposed to calibrate. And we, we will show the, the calibration process in the live stream that we're going to do. And we are working on making it automatic. And we have been working on that for like five months, but it's very hard. <laughs> yeah, it's, there, there are a few really tricky parts to it still. Um, we're going to try to show you the most straightforward, the, the easiest way to, to do this uh, in the live streams in this week. Um, you can always check those out in the playlist that this video is playing in. The next video is going to be us just taking you through all the parts you're going to need, all the choices you have when it comes to electronics, hot ends, um, mechanical builds, what the sort of things are that you need. And yeah, keep watching and we'll see you then. I feel more powerful in this room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs>